Well, back to more of the brilliance of the city builder that is Manor Lords. Hello again there, friends and fans. Raptor here. Welcome back to the demo for Manor Lords Episode 3 as we go on to our second winter. Trees looking beautiful. Wind is blowing as they change colors and the farmers have finished their jobs for the year and we're starting to make bread now, which is great because we're starting to also get a higher population. We got 11 bread and hopefully we'll get some more meat soon from the uh, wonderful deer that should hopefully be uh, coming out from the hunter's camp. I'm trying to see if they actually migrate. Animals uh, have been changing their numbers uh, as we've been continuously hunting them. We're going to go ahead and try to hunt some of the animals there as we continue to uh, you know, farm and do all sorts of other things. So welcome back. Thank you very much for hitting the like button. Thanks for subscribing. It's going to be a little slow now as we start to generate some materials in order to build it for the next year. We've got our population up to 63 now, and that's 21 different uh, people who uh, assign families that can work now. And there's a hell of a lot going on, so it's good to see you all back. I've been enjoying this immensely. Just for every little nuance and nook and cranny of detail and different types of things to uh, look at and switch on and off and adjust and... Uh, also monitor to see how it's different from other games and it's been quite exciting so far so that is for sure logging camp here with three workers generating with five logs biggest slowdown it seems like in this game so far is waiting for the um, ox to go and gather something from the logging camp in this case logs obviously and then bringing it to storage so it actually counts so our logging camp here has five additional logs uh, ready to be stored but they won't count until they are delivered to the, well, either a construction site or hopefully in the future they'll be uh, delivered to a storehouse, which uh, right here, uh, we have zero. So according to the game, we have uh, two logs, but we have five logs, so I'm not exactly sure. We have four here, one being transported, so that could equal five. Maybe it's an animation to store it so it doesn't decay while it's sitting out here. Although I'd argue that the logging camp should be able to store things. I don't know. Would be nice. Also, it looks like some maybe uh, trees might grow at some of these homes eventually in the future. That'd be kind of cool. But I love how all the homes are different. And we don't really get to control what the homes look like. We kind of just get to set up the plot. So whether or not they have an outhouse in the back or whether they have a uh, like a shelter for firewood or something. It's all different. All right, taking a look, we have 40 firewood for fuel for the winter and five bread. Bread is actually going up, but we need more meat. Oh, damn, this song is good. All custom music for Manor Lords is just all sort of manner of goodness. I like it. I certainly do. Windmill is churning away for the year, too. We've got, uh, let's see, 90 grain being turned into flour. Where's our flour count under commodities, I think? Uh, no, under materials. There it is. So 27 flour. We got a bread... Um, well, we got a communal oven working, which is giving us tons of bread. And I think that can be transported via hand to the marketplace, which is nice. It's literally right down here. All right, nice. So the seller is picking up bread from just up the street, delivering it here. The homes that are down here, can easily go to the market. Same with here. A little bit further of a walk, but still doable. Very nice. Very good indeed. Oh, legacy viewing is locked up here in the upper right corner for our uh, lord. I wonder if that means perhaps we can start a dynasty that way, if we could have a, if we can get married, have a child. And then eventually if we die, maybe they can be given, maybe there's perks per character or something like that. Like maybe, uh, you know, we have like a, I don't know, plus five gold or something like that per month or something like that just for random. I don't know. Be interesting to see. Right now we're uh, building ourselves a trading depot, which is where those logs are being transported to. So eventually we will start generating silver. That silver will then be used to buy more animals. So uh, first and foremost, the ox, which doesn't seem to eat any food, by the way. It seems like uh, just being able to eat off some of the uh, grasses and other things is enough. So if we get a second, we won't have to actually house them, and it'll just be basically free real estate. So an additional ox, or rather multiple oxen, will be much more beneficial to us to transport things to and from the 
um, logging camp and then to and from a construction site, which will be very good for us. Very good indeed. We got our first farm up as well. Kind of chilling that out for the year now as uh, all the harvests are done. Although I still want pe people working at the farm just in case. Uh-oh. What was that noise? Oh, we have bread in storage. Food is low. Hmm. How come we're not generating any more meat? Maybe we could put another person in the pantry there. Let's take people off the farm and put them on the granary. Hunting camp doesn't seem to be generating much anymore. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe the hunting camp won't hunt anything. Ah, uh, yep, exactly. So when a herd drops to 20, then it'll stop hunting. I see. Let's see. 20? 33. Okay, so we must change our work area. Well, good to know. Be nice if we could actually select a much larger area and just tell it uh, to hunt in a massive area. Actually, wait a minute. Let's check. Unlimited work area. Okay, so now the hunting camp will go anywhere. Yeah. So hopefully they'll prioritize this area first, and then when that's used up, they'll go down here and leave this herd alone until they get their numbers up. Okay. Yeah, overhunting is a thing. So now we know that. Okay, bread is still coming in. We're good. Timber is good. Firewood's good. Okay. Ooh. Evan, shine down and grow the land. All right, trading post is getting complete. Just building the second building now. Oh, would you look at that? It's like a storage barn. What an interesting looking building. So there's the storage area. And then the administration building. I would imagine that this probably only takes maybe um, two people to operate. But we'll see. I love watching the construction in this game. About halfway done. Everybody leaving for the season. Quite typical in these games for characters to go home for uh, winter months. To be able to change their outfits. Oh, I love how the music changes because we're low on food again. We're still making them buy, though. Hopefully we have enough uh, grain to make enough flour for the end of the year. Oh, 31 flour, yeah. We should be all right. I feel like we should build another communal oven. But we need to finish our trading post first. We need to figure out what types of resources we can trade for. Lots of unknown territory here. We've navigated... Uh, we've navigated it well, considering that we don't really know what lies in store for us in the future. Alright, so no workers there. Good. Yeah, Alright, let's see. Numbers are looking good. They're okay. Not at zero. Let's speed things up a little bit. Hmm. I'm going to force the hunters to go hunting here. There we go. All right, three meat, three bread. Good. Well, we got a lot of sandwiches now. Some nice venison sandwiches coming in. Oh, man. I can't wait until we can use some of our influence, too, to purchase other regions and then be able to settle those as well. And then perhaps we could settle this region and get more hunting lands or more mining. Ooh. 
It's so cool how the zoom in this game works as well. It's so smooth. Being able to just immediately switch to the region view back to the building view is absolutely astonishing. It works so well. Alright, meat and bread are kind of clinging on a little bit. Well, this will be interesting. Six bread. Twenty-two, twenty-six. Forty-one there. Chine. We're going to change that southern source and try that out. Training post almost complete. What a weird building. Oh, nice to hear trees falling down like that. That's amazing. Okay, looks like we just need a little bit more workforce here to build the remaining structure. No other materials needed for the construction of the trading post. But now we need to upgrade three of our homes as well, so we'll need to gather more timber so that way we can build a church and also build a tavern to which we might be able to trade for uh, beer and ale, or maybe they don't need booze yet. Perhaps it could be a thing to generate silver later and they can still be entertained by going there. Maybe for music or something like that. Who knows what passive bonus awaits us. Alright. Trading post complete. Alright. Traveling traders zero. These workers will travel to the nearest trade point to fulfill set inventory targets. Oh. We can send out our own traders too. Interesting. Connected to the road. Upgrade with trading carts. Worked in, work in progress locked in demo. Okay. Open trade overview. Cheap goods for import. Good value to export. Work in progress for both. There's no other real settlements on the map, so I don't think we can trade with the neighbors. We'll have to trade off map. To which would be possible pretty much in any part of the map. I think we'll be able to trade through other regions if they're neutral, maybe. Hmm, interesting. Let's see what else. Materials? Ah. We have construction materials that we can trade, so stone and tools. We can trade crops, food, materials, and commodities. Well, we've got quite a bit of pelts that we can trade. I think we need to wait until the trader comes in then. We have no free workers, so let's take somebody from the... Oh boy, I don't want to mess with timber, don't want to mess with wood. Uh, sorry, timber or flour. Granary's got a lot of people working there. Rightfully so, we've now gone up to 22 bread and 9 meat. Giving the uh, a break from bread a little bit has given us a little bit of room to make more. Hmm. Don't want to mess with food production. But maybe storage will be okay. Let's go down to two there just to get a couple of people working there. Current trade rule, don't trade. Okay, so we'll go ahead and trade our pelts until we can make a tannery. Looks like these gain four. We could then import tools. Looks like we can import those.
Salted meat, berries, eggs, bread. Hmm. We can export or import cloaks, shoes, ale, linen clothes, candles. What would it take us to build a tannery? Ah, here it is. Pelts into leather. Construction cost would be four wood, to which we're short one. Well, we would fetch a little bit more money for that. And now we have the proper wood. Build a tannery down here, then. Okay, another structure going up. Let's go ahead and not trade those. And we shall trade... So it looks like we can sell or buy. Or turn off. We'll go ahead and export those. Target, we want to have maybe... I think we want to keep only 10. That's what that means. I think that means we could sell 126, keep 10. At the current number. Going into another winter. Oh man, look at this. Incredible. Ridiculously beautiful. Rolling hills, we can see all the other regions off in the distance. Ridiculous. Just gorgeous. Okay. So now the tannery going in next. Not sure if we'll need anything for it to operate. Water or uh, tannin or anything like that. We'll see. Alright, logs coming over. Man, at this point, not much is going on aside from a lot of activity to sustain life. But uh, it's really phenomenal just to see this city functioning at its minimum levels. I'd still like to see things like what are present in Austria, the ability to build fences and uh, gates and such in order to enter the city. To be able to build like a little entrance uh, gate or something like that would be quite cool. Uh, but decorations, I think, will be a kind of an end game thing for the developer, or at least I, if they have to wait until the end to add that and fix major bugs, I think that's way more of an important issue at the moment. Keep in mind that we're not able to save in this demo either, so uh, this series, or at least this city, might eventually disappear, and we could start some more series to try to see other things faster and focus on different production lines. Especially if they present themselves in other regions. Hey, hey, we just generated some funds, but I don't know why. Unless we had something sitting there from before. Oh, wait, we're just generating gold? Now we've got eight. I don't think we're... We're not necessarily buying anything. And we don't have any leather to export yet. Unless something's on by default. Oh, maybe we just generate gold by having the trade dealer up. Maybe it's small trades from uh, the local villagers that go there to trade. Maybe? It's like Craigslist. We take a little off the top. Love the handcart motion going. Nice. Look at that massive tree just across from the tannery. That is so cool. Beautiful to see the leaves turn color. Look at that. Every building's so unique and so strange in its design until it's complete. You think to yourself, where will the windows be? Where are the doors going to be? Will the building be constructed out of... Uh, look at this, man. That's amazing. Brick. Wood. This is actually... Um, I think this is... Uh, well... Some sort of a daub on the outside of it. But uh, maybe it's just paint, too, because it is made of clay. I don't know if you'd have to insulate that again. But it probably wouldn't hurt to have more layers on a building. That's for sure. These two buildings kind of mashed together. This one a little more simple looking than, than most, but 
I appreciate the idea of the administration building, the storage building, and then maybe this is a parking area for carts. Well, there goes the construction of the tannery. Popping off now. <clears throat> really like how they put uh, seesaws out in front of the uh, building. There's like a little construction site in front of the building. Rather than just constructing the building, they're modifying some of the construction materials on site in order to build the building. I do like that. Yeah, this building's got to give us some sort of passive income, for sure. Let's see what it may say. Uh, sell surplus goods to uh, passing traveling merchants. Optionally, workers travel to the nearest trade point to buy or sell goods based on stock targets. Trade is done using regional wealth. Yeah, we literally have nothing in there. No generic or pantry storage, so... Alright, the ox is pulled up again. Take a look at bread. 33, 4 meat. Nice. Take a look at firewood. 89, nice. Oh, we're, we're totally fine. Totally fine. Until we're not. And then we're dead. But for now, we're fine. Totally fine. Alright, tannery construction complete. Good job, everybody. Ah, oh, nice. That must smell wonderful. Great, yep. Alright, let's assign somebody to the tannery. Farm is shut down for now. Find ourselves more often needing worker after worker. Let's bring the woodcutter down to one. There we go. Alright, so now we'll start selling uh, tanned, or rather leather hides. Tanned hides. We'll be able to make some more cash from that. And now we should be able to build a livestock trader to get another oxen. And that should bring in a lot more productivity for us. There we go. There we go. Okay, so the livestock trader will go up next. That will allow us to buy oxen or sheep or, you know, pigs or whatever might be offered. Chickens would be quite useful. We could turn that into meat, but also, of course, eggs, which will count as another protein, too. And another food type, which will increase happiness and uh, food variety. So that'll give us one more thing on the uh, slab for the people. All right, now our goal, I'm going to try to not build anything for a bit so we can get the uh, faith thing up and maybe that'll raise overall happiness too. Our approval rating right now is at 57%. Not bad because uh, <laughs> kind of hard to please everybody with a l very minimal uh, amount of things but I think we've managed our resources well so far. And I think we'll still put that here. Continue to clear that area. Don't want to cut down the area near the berries. I want that seasonal resource to be untouched. Or at least the area around it. I don't know if that'll kill it, and I don't want it to bother it too much. 34, 32, 32, okay. Take a look at bread. 45 bread, my goodness. Meat coming in as quickly as we can. Interesting that we don't need to produce uh, arrows. I would imagine the hunter can then manage to make, manufacture, repair their own bows and also traps and also uh, arrows. Kind of their own Fletcher, too. It'll be interesting to see how the military gets some of their equipment as well as... Uh, of course, we'll probably have the blacksmith be able to make things like uh, shields and swords and armor, but perhaps it'll take an advanced armor to do that. Comparing things to how it is in Farthest Frontier, that game has a very intricate system for those types of things where 
The Fletcher, of course, makes crossbows and bow arrows and bolts and other things like that in order to then supply the army and also supply the hunter. And the hunter can also be used as kind of a military unit to defend the town against wolves. No threat of animals so far in this game. I haven't seen any, God forbid, bears or wolves or anything like that. But bandits, too, could also pose a threat. Perhaps the, uh, maybe, maybe the hunters can actually fire at them. Maybe there is going to be some sort of a mild thievery system where until we get some sort of a, uh, maybe a policing force in the town, like a garrison, or as they showed before, the guard towers. That might be a thing. Take a look here at the gu uh, guard towers. Let's see here. Gatehouse. Minimum settlement level medium village. So we actually might be able to build that in this uh, playthrough, but that'll require us to... Uh, get the village up from a small village to a medium, which I imagine will be by upgrading three of the buildings to uh, tier two. All right, construction complete on the livestock trader. Ah, so we can import oxen. Beautiful. Let's get one of our traders off there and try to import an oxen. Oop. And let's go ahead and import... Oh, there are only there are ten. Let's try to import four of these bad boys and get rid of that choke point on the tim on the uh, timber production, the logging camp. That'll help us to get maybe if we can get two to go back and forth from the logging camp, uh, wherever they're logging trees, to then bring it to the logging camp, and then two to bring it to a construction site. That'd be useful. Otherwise, grain is another thing that they can transport. Which is not too big of a deal since it just needs to be transported from the field to the farm here, then thrashed into grain and then brought to the uh, windmill. Now, I don't think that's something that is too difficult or too heavy for the world. Okay, I thought that was a bear. Just checking. <laughs> After mentioning bear, I yeah, from a distance, it looked like a just giant black bear moving through there. And I was like, hell no. Hell no. All right. I'd scared myself. Not even Halloween yet. Okay, windmills pumping away. Food is looking great. 50 bread now. Okay, so food is very, very good looking. Got no grain left. But how much flour? 47 flour. Okay. That's good. So we can pull off the uh, forces from the windmill a little bit. Workforce from there can be pulled back. Gonna go ahead and put people into the tannery. And see if we can keep exporting, or rather producing and then exporting uh, leather. To which we're down to 133 pelts, which has created 12 leather. So we're selling 10. Or maybe down to 10. Let's see what happens when a merchant pulls through. A little leggy at this higher level. Oh, well, we generated some funds there. I didn't catch quite how much it was, but back up to 26. Not bad. Ah, wait. Somebody dropped off an oxen. Good. Now, we also have that hitching post there. Can that person operate two? Not sure exactly. Let's bring down one person from the tannery. I want to build more homes, but I'm saving the wood now for the church. And we might need clergy, but it could also be an automatic a building that just gives a passive bonus for people being able to gather there. Maybe someone doubles as like a logger and a uh, priest or something. Seven timber. Village life church. Grants access to faith for the Burgage plots. Yeah, okay, that seems to be what we're looking for. Something like this. Really do wish there was a blueprint mode. I really... What? Well, that was strange. I... 
We must have just gained uh, eight logs and then it uh, somehow tried to build up here, though. That was clicking to try to do blueprint mode. That was strange. Anyway, that's a better position. Okay, so now we can build a church. All right, we'll see that take place. Damn. Really starting to go into a bustling settlement. 50, no, 63 people in the city. I still only see one oxen working. Gathering and transporting. Ah, I see two now. One here on the road. And one here. Okay, perfect. Okay. So that's a massive bottleneck that has been alleviated now. That's one thing we'll know for the next time is that we should definitely try to get those a little earlier. Looks like storage limit reached at what? The granary or the storehouse. But it doesn't look like any limit has been reached. Although I've seen that pop up before when the markets are full. Ah, that might be it. 15 leather at the clothing stall. That might be it. Now down to 14 and the alert disappeared. Okay, that might be what that is. It is not necessarily full storage, but full um, capacity at the market. Well, let's watch the church be made. A much more interesting building. Probably one of the larger ones that we can build for now. Does not look like we'll be able to build our... Uh, manor house until the medium village size as well. Although I'm not sure if it's available in the demo either. It does seem to have a... Oh, it's a WIP image. Although it's at a different elevation than the other buildings. The gatehouse and the garrison tower. We'll see. Let's watch the church. Hold on, we got an alert with cold. One firewood. Okay, let's go ahead and kick up the production of that. This is a bit of an emergency, so let's go ahead and reduce. We have three oxen now. Good. Mm hmm. Uh, let's go ahead and shut down the windmill. Only two at the hunter's cabin, so let's go with the three here. All right, so... We have 13 flour. It's February. We should be able to last till spring. That means we'll be able to take some people and put them on berry production, too. So I certainly want more people in the town so we can get a few more of these buildings, especially the... Uh, Farms going full full capacity. So we can feed a lot more people, we just need the people to do the work. Good. Oh, darn. Oh, that should totally be possible. Ah, we need 10 resources, though. 10 timber. I will admit it kind of looks strange having this solid line here. I'm not sure if we can actually curve that. It would be kind of cool to, to build, like, a curved fencing area. Or something like that. Or at least build trees to kind of hide that straight edge across the backside. Be kind of nice. Would look much better, I think. Okay, so oxen are being going... Well, they're going to be increased, right? To four? They're going to four. Okay, being increased, going to four. There's the church. Lots and lots of activity around the church.
All right. Settlement level increased. Oh, we can build our manor home now. My house. Oh, it only takes 10. Oh, this will eventually be upgraded, I see. So this looks like this for now, but should be able to increase to be a stone building eventually. Provides garrison space for the Retween. I've never heard that word before. Uh, first manor. Oh, grants a free squad of 12. That must be like a militia force, maybe? Must be built within a bailey. Oh. Provides living space for five peasants as well. Ah, the ladies. Nice. The gatehouse we can build too. Oh, that's great. We could build that to our... Oh, man, that'd be cool to build it like this and then build a wall around it. Okay, if this needs to be built within a bailey, that means we actually need to wall off a settlement... Or we could just wall off an area to fortify it. Unfortunately, a great spot would be here where the iron deposits are. But, uh, oh well. Let's get some more workers here for this summer. So now the goal is to try to fill up every single one of our industries with workers. We have a lot going on, but not a lot of people to do all the work. There we go. All right, so we need to get full workforce at the uh, farm and full workforce at the tannery. Looks like the cold is still being a danger, although we should have a little bit of firewood. But it is February, so March is around the corner where we don't have to worry too much about the winter anymore. And there goes the army. The army of oxen, that is. Good. Wow, so you start with one, and that's a real slowdown to your uh, gathering. But it seems like, first thing to note is that you can really produce things quickly uh, from the trading depot and get a lot of money for free, aside from what I... Oh, no. <laughs> Never mind, forget the money thing I just mentioned. Pay upcoming royal tax, it says. Damn it, always with the taxes. The king demands the region of Raptorium. You are hereby on a mission of debt for the lands in which the royal crown has granted stewardship to the honorable raptor. Taxes to be levied upon the land to be paid in precious wealth or labor. Failure to submit your payment will find the lands forfeit, the governance under the stewards, and return to the crown. Wow. We have 365 days to pay the upcoming royal tax, although I'm not sure what that means. A billion dollars. Ten billion dollars. I have no idea. We'll see. All right, March. Gold should be less of a factor now. So once we get to a medium settlement, then we're going to start being taxed. Wait. Next level manor. We need to get 999 level one plots. No way. We need a thousand homes? That must be a special goal for the demo or something. That must be something to kind of keep you back. A thousand homes is going to be over, I don't know, 2,000 uh, residents. Uh, maybe it's real. I don't know. <laughs> it's going to be crazy. All right, more home construction going on then. We're selling leather at the trading post, right? That should fetch a fine penny. And then we'll be able to keep on our funds for a little while. Uh, let's see, if we got four livestock too, we'll shut down the other livestock dealer when that happens. Look at the field. Very muddy looking. Very uh, perfect for springtime. Oh, there's our royal tax. Build a tax collector to increase the treasury. Oh, interesting. Enables tax collection in the region. So each region will need one. For now, we can pay the tax via trade, but... I guess this is what we're also being advised to do. So when the timber comes in, we'll do it. We're at three currently. We require four. All right, families are moving in. Fantastic. Let's get the farm going again. A 
Lots of activity. I love how we don't necessarily always have to have idle workers, but if we do, it increases the bonus of the speed of construction. A really good thing. That way we don't have to constantly adjust things. Now, in order for us to get another region, we just need to claim with a thousand influence. Any region, it looks like, can be claimed for a thousand, but I think we might want to connect to it, though. Doing it randomly is not a good idea. All right, let's go ahead and readjust a few things. We have no more flowers. So let's shut that down. Go for the berries again. So berries and meat should come in. Try to gather from both of those plots. Okay, so that should bring in lots of meat, lots of berries. And let's see. Ah, uh, just like in Foundation, we can change the bell sound. Go with that bell. Sounds a little bit more accurate for a smaller church of this size. So, oh, passive building, no need for clergy. Alright, so we just need to upgrade the level of uh, food, which will be pretty easy whenever we're making grain again. Now, clothing also needs to be upgraded too, so a uh, number of clothing types available. Cloth, leather, and yarn. So we are selling cloth, or no, leather, yarn, and... Well, cloth will be through linen, so flax. Leather through hunting, which we are providing, which is why one's marked. And yarn, which is going to be through uh, sheep and sheep's wool, which will probably be a weaver. I think there... Is there one building to do that all? Weaver workshop. Now it does both. The weaver will do both flax into linen and wool into yarn. Okay. Looks like the people are able to make their own clothing with that, or at least make repairs to clothing. We've got one idle worker. Put that all into berry gathering since it's much more limited than even the farming season. And now we'll put more people into farming. Still waiting to see if we'll get another livestock, another uh, oxen, but it hasn't happened yet. Keep it open for a while longer. Here comes a merchant. Oh man, look at how cool the roads look. More homes constructed. So our monthly tax is five. Oh, your personal money can be used for diplomatic purposes or for hiring uh, mercenaries and such. Okay. Interesting. Another home complete. Someone should move in soon. Yeah, let's make sure we cover a full area. More people working at the farms. Excellent. Well, I think we got this down. A little bit of uh, work with the rotation of our forces, like our workforce and uh, whether we're gathering or storage, 
uh, working on storage. And storing things is important too. But it seems like we got flow. Damn, I'm impressed. Very good indeed. Very good, I'd say. 77 remaining on that. After that, we'll then focus a little bit more on bread. So meat is coming in, berries coming in. That should mark the two. Indeed it does. So clothing. And entertainment. We're going to have to build a tavern now. And possibly start on uh, ale and beer con uh, production. So the tavern and also the... Uh, what was it? The... Uh, malt house that we need to construct. Ooh, look at the tavern. Big old building. Gonna take five lumber for that. Alright. I gotta have tavern names down below, so if you've watched this far, go ahead and give me the name of your best pub or tavern. I know we're gonna build it across the street from the church, but trust me, this will be fine. We'll build it a little further away. There we go. A little buffer zone for Jesus, okay? It's fine. We'll connect it this way, even. There. <clears throat> Perfect. Now, nobody tell the HOA, okay? They existed even back then. They were... I mean, it, it was kind of like how the... Um, well, you, you ever see... Um, are you familiar with the game called Assassin's Creed? Yeah, it's kind of like the Templars, but, you know, pure evil. Not just, like, kind of evil. You know what I mean? <laughs> Alright, we're going to build ourselves a tavern now. And then we can start getting things like the Malt House up and more all right if you haven't already subscribed make sure you do turn the notification bell to all make sure you do that so you can see more of manor lords updates and more news related to this and many more city builder games do yourself a favor so you don't miss out on it and bypass susan's suppression force i'll see you all next time thank you very much for watching i know it's it's already that time again we gotta go but i'll see you soon make sure you watch the live streams they're lots of fun see you next time goodbye